Hey guys, welcome to 2.5 Implicit Differentiation. This is the second day of Implicit Differentiation. So the objective for today doesn't really change much from the previous video. You're still going to be able to use Implicit Differentiation to find the derivative of an equation or and find tangent lines uh, of those equations at a specific point. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and just begin with the do now. Um, students will usually do, they have a do now. I usually make a do now uh, based on a previous skill, uh, whether it be a calculus skill or a or an algebraic skill that leads up to um, the topic, you know, at hand. So let's just go ahead and just, you know, just for, just for fun, let's go ahead and take the derivative. Let's solve for dy dx, okay? Uh, using the same four steps above. So I'll make those references here. Step one, step two, step three, and step four. So step one, according to the previous video, step one is to differentiate both sides of the equation uh, with respect to x. So I'm going to do this quickly. So it's, it'll be 2x, since that's just x squared. And this would be 2y dy dx, because now I'm taking the derivative of y and y is implicitly defined as maybe a function or a relation of x. And the derivative of 25 is 0. Step 2 would be to um, separate dy dx terms from the non-dy dx terms. So this goes to the other side. 2y dy dx equals minus 2x. The third step is not necessary for this problem because you want to factor out dy dx and 2y is already a factor. Um, so 2y dx, 2y is multiplying dy dx. So I'll go to step four. I'm going to divide out the 2y. That goes, that reduces to one. I get minus 2x over 2y, or I can write it as minus x over y. And this is my derivative in explicit form. Okay, now I'm going to show you guys one thing. This is me just stretching out the topic as usual. Um, let's say that I solve for y, because you can solve for y here is that's that's feasible you couldn't do it in the previous video where some of those curves those relations had many y terms but for this particular uh curve uh, it's actually a circle uh, with radius five if you remember from pre-cal you can actually solve for y and solving for y will give you this and i'll i'll give you guys um, i'll let you guys figure that out on your own So that'll be 25 minus x squared. Of course, since it's a circle, I have the positive and negative version. Okay. So just for simplicity, I'll just, I'm just going to focus on the positive version. Now I can take the derivative of this. Now I have an explicit form. In fact, let's make it derivative friendly. Now I can take the derivative of this. So the derivative of y is using the chain rule and power rule uh, will give me uh, half 25 minus x squared to the minus half times a minus 2x by chain rule. Multiply the derivative of the inside. I'm sorry, multiply the, yeah, the derivative of the inside to the outside. Again, I'm doing this video very late, so um, forgive me if I make a mistake. Uh, so the derivative of this will give me um, twos will divide out, and I will have minus x all over a 25 minus x squared to the positive one half, which I can rewrite it as minus x all over the square root of 25 minus x squared. And
and this derivative matches this derivative. And you guys are probably thinking like, well, sir, I don't see it. Like, how is y and 25 minus x squared the same? Well, I solve for it right here. Replacing y with uh, 25 minus x squared all over uh, all under a root because I solve for y. I have y in explicit form. I can make a substitution and I actually found the derivative in terms of x only. This is my derivative in terms of x and y. So just to let you guys know that implicit differentiation is not a new differentiation rule. It's actually just the same differentiation rules you guys know. Um, but when, when solving for the function is not possible, solving for y is not possible, implicit differentiation helps us find the derivative uh, much more quicker. Okay, so this lesson just, it builds off the previous lesson. So we're going to just go ahead and just take a look at the first example. The first example says, given this curve, this x squared plus y squared is equal to 25, find the second derivative and evaluate the second derivative at the point negative 3 comma 4. Well, this is the reason why I did the do now, because the do now will help students with the lesson, in particular this lesson. So the derivative for the do now is this one right here. I'm going to go ahead and write it down here. We already solved for the first derivative. Now, taking the derivative of the derivative will give me a second derivative. You can call it y double prime if you like if these notations is too exhausting for you guys you can call it y double prime just be careful um, when you're combining all the y's students sometimes add together the y primes and the y so just be careful and to take the derivative of this derivative that would require the quotient rule so the quotient rule is the way I teach my students is low d high minus high d low, the derivative of the low dy dx. Okay, all over the low squared. I found my second derivative. That's done. Now I need to evaluate the point at negative 3 comma 4. So let me just do it over here. So the second derivative evaluate at the point negative 3 comma 4. So negative 3 comma 4 will give me 4 times minus 1 minus minus x times and I'm stuck, dy dx, well, I don't know what that is. I'm just going to write it again, all over 4 squared. Now, I'm stuck here because, I'm sorry, that should not be a negative x. That should be a negative, negative 3. So that should be a negative, negative 3. It's my fault. Again, it's very late. Now let's go ahead and figure out, well, what do I do with this dy dx? Well, recall that dy dx is equal to negative x over y. So if I were to plug in these points into my original derivative, my first derivative, I get dy dx is equal to minus a minus 3 all over 4, which is positive 3 over 4. dy dx equals positive 3 over 4 for the point negative 3 comma 4. So replacing this dy dx with its 
numeric value at the point negative 3, 4. I can rewrite all of this. This becomes a minus 4. I have a triple minus, still minus, times positive 3 over 4, all over 16. Minus 7. I'm sorry. Whoa, whoa. I made a mistake, right? I don't add these guys right here. I multiply first. So that would be a minus 4 minus 9 over 4 all over 16. Okay, you can combine denominators. I'm sorry, you can uh, add this whole number and this fraction. Uh, so that would be, by doing that, you would actually have to make that 4 into a negative 16 over 4. And adding negative 16 over 4 with a negative 9 over 4 will give you a negative 25 over 4 over 16. Oops, sorry. Will give you a, well, you guys probably want to see this, right? The sandwich method, so you guys are used to that. So you multiply the outsides, you multiply the insides, and you get your second derivative. And that's your second derivative at the point negative 3 comma 4. Okay, so we're going to take a look at uh, one more AP style question for this uh, topic and then we'll move on to our next topic which is related rates which is pretty much an application of implicit differentiation. Okay, so Consider the closed curve in the xy plane given by x squared plus 2x plus y to the fourth plus 4y equals 5. Notice they use the term curve because these are not functions anymore. Okay, they're relations. Show that, show that the derivative is equal to this. So this is an actual AP item. It's modified. I, um, B and C are modified for this lesson. Um, but I do have the exact uh, items at the bottom of the page. So in, in this type of problem, they, they give you the derivative. All you have to do is show it. Usually these problems are two points. The first point comes from the actual derivative work like taking the derivative properly. And the second point comes from the work that leads to this answer here. So the work that leads to dy dx. And they'll check your work. Like this is just algebra for the second point. So let's go ahead and just begin. I've been rambling too much. Let's begin. So taking the derivative of the entire equation for both sides with respect to x, I'm going to work quickly with this one. That would give me 2x plus 2 plus 4y to the third times dy dx plus 4 dy dx equals 0. So the derivative of 5 becomes 0. The second step would be to combine, I'm sorry, to separate dy dx terms from non dy dx terms. The third step would be to factor out dy dx since now I have a common factor factor out dy dx and the final step would be to divide out the factor and 
get dy dx in terms of x and y. And I'm done. You guys are probably thinking, well, sir, this answer does not match this answer. You can actually get full credit if you leave it like this. But I'm going to show you how they got to this answer here. Notice that negative 2x minus 2 have a common factor of negative 2. And when I factor out a minus 2, I get left with a x plus 1. Not sure about it. Distribute negative 2 into each term. And you get the previous step. The bottom, I could factor out a 4. And then I could also divide out the 2. Not, necess not necessary for me to write 1, so I can just write it as minus x plus 1 all over 2 times times y cube plus 1. And there's my derivative. Again, this is sufficient. Okay. Uh, so if you ha if you have trouble with algebra or factoring, this is sufficient here. Letter B, um, equation of the tangent line at the point, negative 2 comma 1. So you need a slope and you need a point which you're given. Let's go ahead and just evaluate the derivative at the point negative 2 comma 1. So I'm going to use the f I'm going to use the answer right here part A. Now notice you don't you don't need to actually figure out part A to do part B. If you couldn't perform the derivative, you can actually get points for part B, full credit for part B because the derivative is given to you. So this is just a matter of just plug and chug and then just just, just a little bit of arithmetic and you're done. So it's minus, minus 2, plus 1, over 2, 1, Q, plus 1. And that'll be a positive 2, minus 1, if I distribute the negative, or, or you could just add the inside. Right now my brain's not functioning very well, so that, that would be a positive 1 on top. The bottom would be a 2 times 2, 4. 1 fourth is your derivative. This is called your m uh, using algebra 2 notation. So, And then using algebra 1 point slope form, it's y minus y1. m x. And I tell my students to do this. You'd be surprised that maybe some students may, 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 may mess up with the negatives. And they'll write it as a negative. So um, you can write it as positive. But this is, this is the correct answer. Part C, find the coordinates on the curve where the tangent line is, where the line tangent to the curve is horizontal so what does it mean for a tangent line to be horizontal what does it mean for any line to be horizontal the slope equals zero so if any line that is horizontal has a slope of zero and we're talking about in particular a tangent line we're talking about a derivative is equal to zero. So I just broke this question apart into sections. It says find the coordinates. These are usually coordinates x and y on the curve where the line tangent to the curve is horizontal.
Okay, so let's go ahead and set the derivative equal to zero and we solve for a particular variable. So the derivative, I'm going to use the derivative in part a. I'm just going to copy it. I already forgot the derivative, let me see. I have it right here. Okay, so. Set the derivative equal to zero, and usually you get a point for doing this because that tells the AP reader that you know what it means for a tangent line to be horizontal. It means that the, the derivative is equal to zero. So you get a point for setting the derivative equal to zero. Now, to solve this, well, uh, you can you can cross multiply. Well, you can you can remove the denominator by multiplying both sides. Some students uh, may have learned the butterfly technique. I'm not too sure about this. I never taught this before. Cross multiply both sides. Whatever works for you. My trick, or not really my trick, but um, a shortcut to this is just setting the top equal to zero. And then we solve for x. x equals negative one. And I actually found the x coordinate and usually this would be your second point. Finding a component of the coordinate so what I did, I just found x. Now I need to find y. We don't plug this number back to the derivative because that gives us 0. We just solved for it. We plug this negative 1 back to the curve. And I'm going to need to write the curve down here. This part in yellow right here is the curve. So x squared plus 2x. x squared plus 2x plus um, 4y. No, I'm sorry. y to the fourth plus 4y equals 5. y to the fourth plus 4y equals 5. <laughs> Okay, so when I plug in my uh, my negative one into my x's, I get minus one squared plus two times minus one plus y to the fourth plus four y equals five. <laughs> and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, square this. I can combine these two terms. It's, uh, it's not, I don't know what happened there. Combine those two terms. That gives me y. Th that's to the fourth, I'm sorry. Plus 4y minus 1 equals 5. <laughs> and then I think that this is non-calculator okay but it is a modified question so let me just see over here so solving this equation would require a calculator uh, for this problem it is modified so maybe we're gonna have to use a calculator but in your calculator you would do a solve if you have the inspire you would do a solve comma y so I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like so I went ahead I went ahead and just popped open the calculator I had to pause the video so I don't spend so much time doing this but when I hit enter I get two values now it's okay 
to get two values, okay? Um, so for this one X value, I got two Y's, which is fine. I know that doesn't, that it doesn't obey the vertical line test. Remember that these are not functions. So I'm going to, I'm going to memorize these real quick. So negative 1.923 and 1.114. So when X is equal to negative one, which is what we saw for over here, Y is equal to, I already forgot. So negative 1.92, negative 1.923, and y is equal to 1.114. So here's the answer. This is the answer here. Coordinates, it is asking for coordinates, not just values. Write it in coordinate form. And that's your answer. Letter D, find the coordinates on the curve where the line tangent to the curve is vertical. So what does it mean for, a, for a, any line to be vertical? the slope is undefined. What does it mean for a slope to be undefined? The slope gave you some number over zero. In other words, having zero in the denominator is what gives an undefined slope. What does slope mean? Derivative. So, Setting, I'm not even going to write it down. We're going to set the denominator equal to zero. We're going to set the denominator equal to zero. So 2yq plus 1 equals zero. And this can be solved without a calculator because it, this does mirror part C of the actual 2008. Um, and notice that this is same vertical. It says here, find the coordinates of two points. So we have, the answer must be two points on the curve where the line tangent of the curve is vertical. So pretty similar to this. The same question. It's the exact same question. So it's pretty obvious to see that y must be, um, y must be 1. I'm sorry, no, not 1. Negative 1. Okay, you divide two to both sides, you subtract one, you take the cube root of negative one, you get y is equal to one. We're, and we want to find the coordinates on the curve. So y goes back to the curve. I know it's very messy, but this is a curve. So let's write it down here neatly. Okay, so if I plug in negative 1 for every y, I get x squared plus 2x uh, plus minus 1 to the fourth plus 4 times minus 1 equals 5. And that gives me x squared plus 2x. This becomes a positive 1. This becomes a negative 4. So I have minus 3 equals 5. Well, I have a quadratic. And we know how to solve quadratics. x squared plus 2x minus 8 is equal to 0. We can, we can make this quadratic form into a factored form. So that would be x, x. Two numbers that multiply give me negative 8. But when I add, it gives me positive 2. I think it's this. Again, it's very late. That seems to work. Yes. Solutions. X is equal to negative 4. X is equal to positive 2. When 
y is equal to negative 1. So we have two points, two coordinates. And if you notice, this is the answer right here. That's the original problem. Find the two coordinates. So minus 4 comma minus 1 and 2 comma negative 1. Those are the coordinates such that the curve, and we don't know how the curve looks like. I don't know how the curve looks like. There's two coordinates that the curve is vert, uh, vertical. Well, there's three, but ignore this poorly drawn curve. Focus on these two right here. Those are the two curves. I'm sorry, the two points where the curve has a vertical tangent. 